So hi, my name is Victoria. Um, I'm a freelance artist and researcher working between Sheffield and Leeds. Um, and I was a student at High Stores between 2002 and 2009. Um, currently, I'm a co-director of an artist-led studio and gallery space in Sheffield City Centre called GLOAM and have recently completed a practice-led PhD in performance and fine art practice. Um, this study specifically focused on human and non-human performances, so specifically looking at the performativity of material substances on a microscopic scale. Um, so for example, the fluidity and movement of water, um, diffractive phenomena such as iridescences or patterns of murmuration to the energy present in natural happenings such as in earthquakes, landslides or um, volcanoes. So examples of this type of work um, include say Pablo Picasso's light drawings, David Medella's cloud canyons, Alan Capro's fluids, uh, Robert Rauschenberg's Mud Muse, Nancy Holt's Sun Tunnels, uh, Walter D. Maria's The Lightning Field, uh, Hugh Suxin's Washing the River, Son Dong's Writing Diary with Water, uh, Francis I. Lisa's Paradox of Practice One, um, Ravine Nushwander's Blow, Teresa Mongolia's Inlet Air, and Studio Zimon's uh, 36 ventilators and 4.7 uh, meter cubed packing chips, which was performed in 2014. <laughs> so as a practice-led PhD, I produced a series of works which practically considered these matters and subjects. The work would often take the form of time-sensitive performances, that is performances which happened over many hours or months, even years in some cases, public performances, um, photographic works, videos, scores, events, talks, and international collaborations with artists, scientists, and ecologists. Um, examples of these work included Triptych, 2017, uh, which focused on the liveliness or, and material, uh, the materiality and movement of gravity and light. Uh, we also had a conversation on the subject of nothingness, which was hosted by a group of artists and philosophers which came together to critically discuss the subject of nothingness which was recorded on a tape and then it was erased using a neodynism neo magnet, I can't say that word, um, which basically changed the magnetic field around the tape so when we played the tape back we heard nothingness so to speak. Um, what else did I do? I um, did a performance called Aggregates, which was uh, something called a happening, which occurred in a working quarry site. Um, and this was looking at plastic geologies, uh, working with participatory practices, and people working in the natural environment instead of looking at works maybe produced in a theatre or an exhibition space. Um, I also produced a piece called Watercolour, between 2017 and 2018, uh, which was an international email art project, um, which basically I wrote to some artists, they responded back to me, and I asked them to place individually five pieces of white A4 paper on the five coloured seas around the world. So the Red Sea, White Sea, Black Sea, Yellow Sea and Greenland Sea to create five conceptual watercolour paintings. Um, there was a project called Orbit, which looked at diffractive and reflective phenomena that I collaborated on with my partner. Um, a project called Ash between 2017 and 2020, um, in which three pieces of Nepalese locked paper were placed on a sacred and polluted river in Nepal called the Bagmati River, which is located downstream from a place called Pashupatinath Temple, which functions as an open cry, pry cremation site. Um, so because of the fact that it is a river used for cremation practices, um, it has um, human remains in it, industrial waste, domestic uh, waste as well. So I decided to chemically analyse these paper samples working with scientists across different universities um, to try and determine what residual matter was on the pieces of paper. Um, and then a recent project that I'm currently working on is called Anemone 
which is a work in progress looking at human and non-human movement pieces, specifically looking at movement and marine plant life as performances. Um, so it to, to explain how I kind of arrived at this type of work, I will go back and I will briefly outline how I became an artist and a researcher, um, or a person working in the arts and educational sector. Um, I'll discuss the educational side a little bit more in detail later on. So after leaving High Stores, I worked at Sheffield Theatres um, for a year deciding um, how I wanted to spend my life and what I wanted to do. Um, in 2009, 2010, I was accepted onto a performing arts course at the University of Salford where I studied for two years and then I transferred to York St John University for my third. At Salford I studied the practical and theoretical aspects of classical and contemporary dance, movement, acting, voice work, playwriting, uh, radio and telev television plays and then at York St John I studied contemporary theatre practice uh, with a focus specifically on theatre making, so compositions, collaborations, scenography, etc, etc. Um, and on these courses I performed in plays such as Peter Wellen's The Accrington Pals, which was written or uh, produced in 1981, um, Caprell Capac's The Insect Play from 1992, and David Hare's The Hours, which uh, was a book produced um, and adapted into a screenplay, which then was in, then filmed and, and produced into a cinematic piece. Um, we also produced our own works and performances, which were staged in public places, such as in auditoriums or online forums, and then also like on the street in, in public spaces. Um, between these two courses, I was awarded a first class B honours degree and presented with York Theatre Royal Graduate Prize. This award came with a chance to perform at the York Theatre Royal, which is similar to Sheffield's Crucible or Lyceum Theatre, um, and work with their directors to write, produce and stage a play in their auditorium to the public, which was wonderful. And I transferred between these two universities as not only did I want to specialise more specifically in theatre practice, um, I became unfortunately quite Ill, unwell during my time at university and I felt that I would recover sooner um, in a smaller city such as in York. Um, so following my BA, I applied and was offered a master's, a spot on the master's course at York St John, um, again studying theatre practice, which allowed me to deepen my knowledge of the subject area. It was a part-time master's and I started to do freelance work with the aim of funding. Um, my course and volunteered at a company where all the performers have been diagnosed with mental health conditions. This functioned as both a theatre company and as a support system for many of the actors and volunteers that work there. In the months leading up to my second year, I started to make friends and collaborate with the students on the MA Fine Art course, who in passing mentioned that I was producing work which to them seemed to fit more so uh, within performance art as opposed to in theatre practice or within the field of the performing arts. So for context, um, performance art is dissimilar to the performing arts. Um, it's a movement that occurred in the early 1900s and focused on movement and aliveness or liveness and the impermanence of performances with human and non-human bodies in space and time. So. I decided to ask my university if I could transfer from the theatre course to the MA art course um, for the second year and instead of deciding to go straight across to art they offered me a chance to attend both sets of classes for both courses and to be assessed under both degrees criteria. Um, I agreed and was an awarded an MA with distinction. Um, under the name MA Performance which basically was an amalgamation of both those subjects. So beyond balancing my studies and freelance work, the challenges of studying at BA and MA level um, were finding time to rest and recuperate. Uh, if I were to do it all again, I would prioritise sleeping and seeing more of the people which energised, supported and nourished me through friendship 
the ability to have downtime is really needed when working hard and sustaining a commitment to studying over many months and years. So my advice for you, if you were to go to university, would be to pace yourselves and to find ways of working that allow you to maintain a good balance between work, sleep and seeing friends. Um, I cannot overstate this enough. Um, I'd also suggest that you really think hard and go after what you're really interested in as opposed to just going through the motions of pursuing higher education. Um, it's really important that, that you feel like a very deep connection to something that you're learning because there will be late nights and long 